16th President of the United States of the GOP began his time in office in 1861. During the Civil War, I got the opportunity to sit down with the former First Lady to talk about her experiences. What was it like for y'all at home during this time? It was hard. Abe was working really hard. He felt most responsible for everything in the world that was happening around us. Really, we just did our best to make the best moments count. He was distant and stressed. Understandably so. And we looked forward to the day it was all over. What the family didn't know was what the end really entailed. April 14th had something different than anything anyone could have expected. So walk me through that day. It had been five days since General Lee surrendered, and we were finally getting back to normalcy around the house. There was still a lot of work to do, but you could tell that a burden had been lifted off his shoulders. We had a good morning, and then he went to work the next day. So, no mention of any worries or concerns or anything? Not that I remember. So, what was it like that evening? He came home and cleaned up for the play. We left the White House a little late, but that wasn't the end of the world. Nothing was off or weird about him? No. So, this truly was completely out of the blue? Completely out of the blue. Abraham and Mary were off to Ford's Theater in D.C. to watch a showing of the play, Our American Cousin. However, this comedy was about to turn to tragedy. When we got there, the play had already started. We were taken up to a private booth and welcomed by Henry and his wife. Henry Rathbone and his wife Clara were close friends of the Lincolns. I sat down with Henry a couple weeks ago to talk about that night. So you didn't see anything strange or unusual at any point in the night? No, it, it was a great play. Abraham was laughing so hard. and it, it, was, it was great, nothing unusual. That's when the unexpected happened. At 10.15, a man slipped into the private box and fired his 44 caliber Derringer into the back of Abraham Lincoln's head. So what did you do? It, it caught me off guard. I was really stunned, but being fresh out of a war, I got my bearings together quickly, and I rushed to tackle Booth and try and apprehend him. So did you get him to the ground? Unfortunately, I did not. I rushed towards him, but he was already two steps ahead, and as I got closer, he turned around and plunged the knife into my shoulder. He stabbed you? Yes, ma'am. I fell to the ground, and the pain in my shoulder was so extreme. I don't know how I saw, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw Booth jump from the balcony to the stage. So what were you doing during all this? Honestly, I was just completely shocked after the gunshot and me looking over and Abe's just completely slumped. All I could do was scream. So what was going through your head during these moments? Honestly, I can't recall much. I just remember him stabbing Henry and jumping off the booth. But all I could truly think about was Abraham. The audience that night perceived the sound of the gunshot as part of the play. However, one young man leapt right into action. So you knew something was wrong. When I heard the sound of the gunshot, my brain immediately went to the worst. The first lady screaming, that was just reassuring me that someone needed my help. So you hear the first lady scream, you know something's wrong, you jump in to help, what's your plan? I didn't really have one. I knew where they were. So I went to the box and Ms. Lincoln was just sobbing and begging for me to help. I think in the heat of the moment, I just forgot uh, all about the gunshot. So I just remembered the knife. So I was frankly just looking for a stab wound. But then I remembered when I didn't find any stab wounds, it was a gunshot. So then I started looking for bullet holes. So what did you find? I found a large clot of blood, about one inch below the superior curve line and an inch and a half to the left of the median line of the occipital bone in the back of the skull. So at this point, you make your assessment, is it treatable? Not in my opinion. His wound was mortal. It was impossible to treat. Army surgeon Dr. Charles Taft and Dr. Albert King then joined Leal in the presidential box and agreed with the prognosis. None of them believed that Lincoln would survive even a carriage ride back to the White House. Instead, they decided to move Lincoln to a more comfortable place for his final hours. At this point, Abraham is fighting for his life. The doctors have said, He's probably not going to make it through. It's a mortal wound. So walk me through those last moments. I mean, what, what's going through your head? What are you thinking? Really, the only thing I could do is cherish our last moments together. 
Robert stood by me at his bed. But really all I can truly think about is who could cause me this pain. So you just wanted Booth. Yeah, to be honest, just knowing that Abe was gone, I wasn't gonna have him back. The only thing that seemed right was them finding Booth. For Mary Todd, justice was necessary for her healing. On April 16th, just two days later, Major James Rowan O'Bearn was put on the task of hunting down the man behind it all, John Wilkes Booth. Man, I mean, what a big task. That brings a ton of responsibility on you especially. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of responsibility and weight, and I take that seriously. Um, but I was ready for it. I was prepared for the task. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stress. Um, everyone on the national stage is looking at you. You're the guy trying to find the guy who assassinated the president. That's a big deal. Um, but I took that seriously, and I think it was helpful that we caught their trail quickly and realized they went to Virginia, so we were on it pretty hot. So, I mean, you're a man leading a bunch of men in a huge task. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's difficulties as with anything. Um, I think we were just also passionate about going and finding him. Also, we wanted to do it, that we were able to really push our bodies to exhaustion. So we ended up going back to Maryland and just awaiting further orders. So what are the orders from this point on? So at this point, Chief Baker was ordered to take a group back to Virginia. And I was ordered to keep my group in Maryland and we kept our search going for him there. Is there any disappointment there? I mean, you're the person who at the beginning says, hey, we have a trail here, we're going to go to Virginia, and then right. you get called back and sends another group out. Obviously, I mean, I was the one who thought he had went to Virginia, but this is such a big deal. I, I don't care who finds him. I just want him found. And when the news came out that we had got him, I was so happy. It wouldn't matter if I found it or if someone I hated found him. I was just happy we got our guy. On April 26th, after 10 days of long searching, Baker and his men surrounded the place in which Wilkes Booth and his accomplice hid. They set fire to Garrett's barn in Virginia in hopes of smoking the two men out, but Wilkes Booth was not going down without a fight. The confrontation between one of Baker's men and Booth left John in critical condition. His accomplice, David Harold, was taken captive in good hope, but Booth died later that day. So you get this news on April 26th, I mean, what goes through your head at that point? I mean, you're hearing not only has he been captured, but Booth is now fighting for his own life. Yeah, honestly, I'm just so happy that I'm not scared to my own life now and my friends and family's life. I'm glad that I can now live in peace and properly grieve Abe's death. For the Lincolns, it was good news. Justice had been served, but at what cost? Very grateful. <laughs> that Booth has been put to rest. <laughs> but we'll never get a bad place. I don't want it. No truer words could be said. Justice served only heals the soul to an extent. Mary Todd and her family have to live with the pain of losing a loved one for their entire life. And all of America would also grieve the loss of a great president who would be unable to complete his second term. I'm Natalie French.